With us now is Courtney Shine Mel. Uh, she's a friend of Jen's, uh, Jen Kalanita, who's been on our show before. And she said, well, if you liked my books, you're going to love my friend. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Courtney Shine Mel. How are you? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. Good. It's like friends. They all kind of like get together, right? It's a very, very cohesive group in the kid lit, teen lit community. We really do, especially in New York, know all, like hang out, know each other read each other's stuff before it's published and make sure that it makes sense. Recommend illustrators to each other, right? Well, or... actually, um, we, I, I have one series that's been illustrated and I've never met the illustrator. I've never even spoken to her. We emailed once. That is really? a whole thing on the publisher side of things. Now, you have over 16 books. What was your first? My first book was a book for kind of almost teens, like the 12 to 14 range called uh, My So-Called Family. Okay. And, uh, and that was published in 2008. How did you get your big break? Well, I I wrote my entire life. I have been I have no memory of not wanting to be a writer. And then I took every writing class in school and I majored in creative writing in college and then I was terrified of not being able to make a career of it. So I went to law school and <laughs> uh, and did all of that, took the bar, practiced for 6 years and I think I think that's a great thing to do if you actually want to be a lawyer, but it's really not a great path if you don't want to be a lawyer. Uh, and I was unhappy about it, and I, I wanted... You took the long route around, right? I took a 10-year, <laughs> basically, detour, and and I started writing on the weekends, on one day a weekend, because I was in the office one of the weekend days, and so I had this one day out of seven to write, and I thought, well, a kid's book will be shorter. I'll start with that and see what happens, and the instant I started, it was the right voice for me, so... That and so I, I got a book contract and I gave notice. And, and you gave notice. I invited everyone to my book party. Congratulations. And they all came. And yeah, and people are still coming because now you've got, look at this. What is this? Tell me about this. So this is the Kindness Club. It's my new middle grade series. Middle grade is kids ages 8 to 12 or thereabouts. And it came out um, exactly a week ago. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And it is a. I feel it smells new. It smells new, it feels, right? Yeah. That's one. And I just got my author copies. <laughs> there's nothing. There's no high like opening the box of, of your book, your own book, because you're, you sit there by yourself and you're creating something from nothing. It's just a nugget in your head, and you think this is impossible to turn into something that is ever going to have an ending, and then it does, and then it exists in something you can tangibly hold in your hands, and that's I feel like part of why I'm in this is I, I love creating something from nothing. And I started out as a graphic artist, so when I talk about paper and ink and the smell of something, I mean, it's a sincere thing. Like, uh, because there's so many things that are like ebooks now. Yes. To have a real, to still make yes. a real book means you're really dedicated to the art of it. I think, I mean, I think a decade ago people were saying, like, oh, books are going to disappear, it's going to all be ebooks, and maybe that will still happen in the kids' book thing. I think that we're going to have more tangible copies because kids like to be read to. But I am happy that I got into this business when. For sure, things are made with paper and ink, and you can hold them because it's it's so meaningful to me. Yes, and the weight of it is really nice. Yeah, so, it's, it's hefty. So, it feels like a real thing. Tell me about your characters. So this, so the Kindness Club. This is the first book in the series. There are three kids in this club. They are kind of rejected from the cool kids club in their school. One of them is desperate to be in it. The other two are at peace with the fact that they're not in this cool club, but still they are assigned to do a, a school project together and they end up forming a club of their own to test the effect of kindness on other people, particularly people who are not as nice as perhaps these kids are. And that is the journey they go through. So you're really starting a whole movement because you realize what you're so. doing. I, this is like the catalyst and you even have uh, ways to interact with the book on your website. Tell yes. us about that. So, um, well, really, the book started because I was having a really bad day one day. It was just one of those days where it was the coldest day of the year, and I was fighting with my best friend, and I can't even remember what else was going wrong, but nothing was going right, and I wanted to stay home and be under the covers, and I couldn't because I'd asked someone a favor, so I needed to show up for that. Um, there's another writer named Libba Bray who's amazing. She writes teen books. You should read her. She's extraordinary. I, every every Tuesday for the last six years have mentored a group of teen writers and, and Libba is their favorite writer. And I did not know Libba well, uh, but I had asked her to come to these kids end of the semester reading and surprise them because I knew they would go insane. And she amazingly said yes. And so since she was leaving her house in you know a million below zero weather, I had to leave my house too. And I got there and I was so crabby and she walked in the door and there were the kids started crying like the Beatles had walked in. It was so moving, wow. and I watched her 
take the time to talk to each of them, make each of them feel so seen, and gave out her email address to these kids and said to stay in touch. And it was such an, a momentous thing in their lives. And I realized at the end of the evening, I was not in a bad mood anymore. And all the things that had made me upset were still true, and it was still freezing. But I was absolutely, like, I was thrilled. It was just a totally different day than what I anticipated it being. And I was Googling and, you know, about how kindness changes our lives. And it's if you are kind to someone, if someone is kind to you, or even if you just witness a kindness that boosts the serotonin in your brain and totally changes everything about the day that you're having. Um, so that was what began the book. And now, and now that I'm writing about kindness, I look for it everywhere. And when you're looking for something, it, you know, it's like I think we're in a bad mood about something and it's like we see that sadness everywhere. And when you're looking for something that you just see more of it, you notice more of it. And I've been seeing it everywhere. So on social media, I've been asking people to send me in, kids especially, what they're doing, what the kindnesses are in their lives. And uh, every Monday on um, my Instagram and Twitter, I post Kind Kid Monday and one kid's story of kindness. And it can be something really small, like they help their mom give the baby a bath. Or, and then there are kids who do extraordinary things of you know, giving in lieu of birthday presents, having donations made to a certain charity, or, or organizing fundraisers, or cutting their hair for locks of love. Um, and it's just, it's been a gift to be able to see all this kindness happening. And I'm thrilled with it because I'm writing more books in the series, so it's also research for me. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's a nice way to go through life looking for kindness. Absolutely. You know, celebrating the essence of life, you know, helping youth, uh, find out that there are choices that you really can choose yeah. to be kind. And I think that kids, I think all of us, but I think kids in particular always want to do the right thing. It's not always easy to, it, it doesn't always occur to us that there's a kinder way to be and we don't always know what that is in terms of standing up for somebody or even smiling and saying please and thank you. There are so many things we go through life just on autopilot and we might not, you know, say thank you to the person who held the door open for us and I think I, I think I've become better at that since writing this, but in t I go to schools all the time now. Um, and well, I've been going to schools for years with all of my books, but in the last couple of weeks with the Kindness Club and just saying to kids, like, let's talk about what things happen in our lives that maybe we haven't thought of the right, the thing that we can do that makes this moment better, not only for us, but for the people we're with. And their ideas have been amazing. Perfect. Um, and even as adults, you know, because you said you had a bad day or whatever, I grew up in a really great household. My mother was amazing, um, and she would always talk about warm fuzzies and cold pricklies, right? And so if you want to give somebody a warm fuzzy, yes. you know, you, you yeah. behave and you act in this way, and you want to give, you know, those cold pricklies, you know. And it, and it really did make a difference. It's like almost like my DNA or my mindset. Ever since I was a young girl, I had that gift. But not every child has that gift. Right. And I think this is wonderful that I you wrote so. this book. Thank you. Because thank you. Um, it's like a surrogate. And I think habits, you know, I think your family gave you this habit of looking for things to do that are kind for other people. And I, and I, I mean, I think that books are amazing in terms of there are studies done that people who read novels are more empathetic than people who don't. <laughs> so I, so I love being in this business. But I also think that, you know, it, it books can help us form habits because we notice things. And, and especially when you're sitting with something for a couple of hours and really thinking about it, it, it can, it can change the way you look at things. And so I like it's part of why I love what I do. Love it. You're awesome. And I'm just going to turn, wait, I just want to open up one chapter. Let's see what this says here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's this always is pretty scary. cool. The, oh, oh, really? <laughs> really? It's, it's, okay. You never know. No, 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 no. Uh, well, you never know, but you know it's going to be good. Um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, it's talking about an orthodontist visit. <laughs> And uh, about paying well, the bill. Well, yeah, it's 10-year-old, so they right. to get braces. Correct. <laughs> this is perfect. And I have a little boy, Matthew, who's uh, just turned 11. He's in sixth grade. Uh, and he's one of the most kindest people I know. And I'm, I'm blessed to have him. But I know that he's going to love this book, too. So thank you for joining us. And thank you for I having me. I see you have me. another book. We're just going to yeah, not even talk much about it. But let's just Stella give it a little Bat bit of a, series, a pause. It's for slightly younger kids. I would say kids 6 to 9. And it's okay. about sisters whose parents own a candy store. Oh, so my grandparents like, sold candy. I'm into you're this too. Kidding. That's no. amazing. Okay, cool. Courtney, it's thanks like for being a guest. For me. Keep coming back. I would love book to. Book after book after book. You've got 16, who knows how many more, and this is your new baby. I know, isn't it beautiful? Yay, it is beautiful. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're celebrating the essence of life right here with Courtney Shine Mel. Stay tuned for more on Live It Up.